Channel 6, Miami, in the summers. I'd be in at 4 to watch my boy. Now, the, the actual Greek, the, the, the guy who is the Greek, Bill Raymond, I just finished working with Bill. He played my father on, um, I did a show, uh, a limited series for HBO called Mrs. Fletcher. And he played my dad. I'm telling you, it's crazy. And I worked with him 20 years ago. It's you know? Just everybody in there. The guy that plays the longshoreman that the cop Chris wants Bauer. to take down. That guy, I've seen him do some great fucking yeah. work. Yeah. You know, everybody in that movie, everybody in that TV show is doing great work. And here's where... Like, after the last week's episodes I watched with my wife, we actually had a discussion that this show might be as good as The Fucking Sopranos. If you're looking at it from where I'm standing. It's debatable. It depends what your preference is. Very debatable, but the writing is second to none. The way they go it's into the episodes, show. different fucking complete that's show. Why, that's why when people come up to me and they say that, I, I just basically, I, look, I don't I don't really classify things like that. But I don't know. I don't know. Just because, uh, I don't know. It just uh, it's just it makes me feel a little uneasy. to. to, to no. Be, I know there, there are shows that I like, that I love. Um, whether they be the honeymooners, the odd couple, Game of Thrones, Sopranos, Mad Men. See, I think Mad Men is a genius show. That's a good show. My wife, it's more my wife. She turned me on to it. Um, and then, you know, sitcoms. I love sitcoms. Mike and Molly. Everybody loves Raymond. It, you know, I, I just love watching people act. I love I love film and I love TV. I love watching people act. When it's something that, like, when I watch The Why, I'm learning. I'm taking notes. Not that I'm going to work, you know, anytime soon, but I'm taking notes. Hey, man, I did it. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm going, Jesus Christ, look. You know, the thing that opens me up, to, I love watching stuff that opens me up and takes me away while I'm watching. And I still remember going to Cop Weed on 178th in Amsterdam, and there were Cubans in 1984. And I'm like, I would go there every day. And one day they saw me speak in English. They didn't think I spoke out. I was talking English. And the one guy came over and he's like, hey, you, you want to sell nickel bucks for us? I go, yeah, why not? And I stood out there for like a week until I realized that I was getting $25 for every 25 nickel bags that I sold. I had to sell 25 nickel bags and i make $25. And I'm like, what the fuck are they doing? So one day I went there, he gave me my 25 nickel bags. And I go, I'm going to go up the block and catch the people by the light. The guy goes, that's a good idea. I went up by the light. He goes, you go up there. It was like 10 in the morning. I sold three bags, and I just kept walking to 178 to the, to the Port Authority. I stopped at fucking uh, the gambling joint upstairs. I, I lost 20, and I got on the bus back to Jersey, and I never could cop over there. And then I went to San Francisco, and I lived a block away from the Haight-Ashbury. And again, they were all Cubans that come over in Mariel. And I spoke English to, like, help us out. So I'm on a corner with these guys, hiding coke in the bumpers, hiding weed in the bumpers, fucking... It was, there was a trans, not a trans... He was a guy, a Cuban dude, that only fucked half trannies, like Cuban ones that just put makeup on and they put, like, two bags for their tits. And he would have them out there slinging. Right. So you went up to him, gave him the 10 bucks... And he would have two men dressed as women, slinging with a wig on and heels and the whole thing. And if they fucked up, he would backhand them and the wig would fall off. It was fucking tremendous. It was right off his show. So when I watched this shit, I remember like, oh, my God, this is as real as it yeah. fucking gets. Yeah. I mean, that that sort of lifestyle has been kind I don't want to say it's been like romanticized, but... The streets, anybody who's been in the streets, anybody who's, who's been in their car 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning and not been in the best neighborhood really knows what goes down. So really scary shit goes down. Some, like, um, I mean, I, 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 I've seen a lot, you know, and uh, you're like, how do you come back? 
you How don't do you come back to being treated like that and they you have to you know That's, you have to some of these people have to even like it's watching sad, man. it's sad man even watching michael b jordan in there like you're still friends yeah. with him like it, he was 12 13 14 15 whatever the fuck he I'm was I'm Young like, wow, dad. look at the acting. No wonder this kid became who he was. This yeah. guy was around fucking... So the show just fucking rattles me. I love you with all my heart, but it makes me love you more. Like, you know, my wife and I were talking, and Mercy was in the room. So we were watching. You know, I can't have my daughter in the room for the while. No, 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 no. But it gets, it gets richer, Joe. See, ep season three, season four, it, you know, season two, a lot of us were light. Um, season one, we were very heavy. Season two was predominantly um, the, uh, the, uh, the longshoremen and all that. And a lot of us didn't have much to do. Like, if you notice in the second season, I'm doing a lot of surveillance. We're in the car, we're on the boxes, we're here, which was kind of a blessing in disguise because we got to work every day, all the time. We Every time we came to work, we did second unit with Bob, Robert F. Colesbury. And then Bob winded up passing away during uh, season two, going into season three, which, by the way, we never knew we were going to have because um, HBO was never really that hot with the wire, you know? So uh, David always had to pull the rabbit out of the hat. And we had some supporters there like Carolyn Strauss at the time who really believed in the show. And I, and we, we kept getting another season, but it was like, Oh, we're done. That's it. Um, very much in the shadows of a lot of those shows at the time. Um, you've mentioned a few, you know, like Six Feet Under, Sopranos, Sex in the City. When Sex in the City was on, Sopranos was on, Six Feet Under was on, any other, you didn't know about it. Nobody knew about The Wire when we were doing it. It wasn't until later on and then... Um, we we The show had never gotten nominated... Never, um, David, I I don't think David got nominated. I mean, he won a Peabody Award, but he never got nominated. Michael K never got Idris, uh, Wendell Pierce. I mean, Wendell, how many things have I seen Wendell Pierce in? Everywhere. 